One of this year's biggest game releases was supposed to be Cyberpunk 2077. This was a massive AAA release. It even had Keanu Reeves in the te television ads. Then Sony pulled the title from their PlayStation store. So what went wrong and why did all this happen? Let's think about this from a software engineering perspective. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel where we discuss ideas about software development and software engineering. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please press like, and if you really enjoy it, hit subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so we can keep you informed of future episodes. In this episode, I'd like to explore what went wrong uh, in the release of Cyberpunk 2077. I think there were problems in planning, culture and engineering approach, which I'd like to discuss and offer my advice to the software uh, producers. None of this is because I am a great gamer, but rather because this is just an unusually visible version of a pretty common way of failing with software. And it's a great example of that really difficult interaction between poor business decision making and poor engineering practice. There's a better way than the traditional waterfall approach that's so common in the gaming industry. I believe that taking a more rational engineering approach can address these problems. Cyberpunk 2077 is a big release from a games company called CD Projekt Red Studio. Uh, CD Projekt Red is a successful independent games company with a largely good reputation within the games industry and with gamers. They've released a series of very successful titles over the years, but this time things didn't go too well. Let's quickly recap what actually happened. Cyberpunk 2077 was a multi-platform release. It was targeted at release for PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and Stadia, the Google streaming version. Uh, it also was advertised as plays great on Xbox Series X and PS5. On release, there were lots of problems. The main trouble was with the consoles. There were so many complaints of bugs and crashes that eventually Sony removed the game from the PlayStation platform. This, this is a first, this kind of withdrawal after release. Microsoft are still selling the game as of today, but are offering full refunds to anybody that's not happy with the product. CD Projekt Red's share price dropped 20% in a day. Actually, it's worse than that. Their share price has dropped over 45% in the last couple of weeks. I'd say that this is a failure of software engineering. But as is so often the case, that also means it's a failure in business terms. These things are not separate. For anyone that's been here before, you can probably guess at some of the things that I want to talk about. How could the ideas of continuous delivery have helped to avoid this disaster? There were some warning signs along the way, before the release. Here's a quote from a popular gaming website. Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the most highly anticipated video games of the past decade. It's already been delayed three times. Employees at CD Projekt Red, the Polish studio behind the game, have reportedly been required to work long hours, including six-day weeks, for more than a year. The practice is called crunch in the video games industry and is sadly all too common. The games industry is not widely seen as progressive in terms of software engineering practice. And while from their comments on their website, CD Projekt Red clearly aim to value their development teams, this is kind of working against the old school culture that is so prevalent in their industry. So it's starting from a pretty low base. The other thing that happened, remember the comment plays great on Xbox Series X and PS5? Well, it did on the whole, but these are the brand new versions of these consoles. What it didn't do was play great on Xbox One and PS4, which is where the current market is. CD Projekt Red prided themselves on taking a positive approach to their work. Our team is our greatest asset, they say on their website. We're always on the lookout for new solutions that can enhance our teamwork. 
We employ people who are passionate about video games and about delivering top quality products and services. Finally, there are a couple of job adverts from the CD Projekt website. I'm not going to read all of these out, but take it from me that while it does mention fancy coffee and seven different types of milk, it doesn't once mention testing. It also doesn't mention the quality of the software being produced, other than perhaps indirectly in terms of following requirements and the importance of skills in debugging for an applicant. If you value the skills of debugging over skills in testing, you are looking in the wrong place. I think that even looking from the outside with no more evidence than I have shown you so far, it's obvious that CD Projekt Red isn't actually practicing continuous delivery. I don't know what CD in their name means, but it's not continuous delivery. I don't know what their testing approach is either. But my guess is that there's no CI, there's no CD, and if there are automated tests, they are treated as an afterthought and not as part of an engineering approach to engineering the game. Let's look at this from another perspective, though, the perspective of planning and marketing a release. If you're releasing a big product of any kind, like a AAA game, you want to make a splash. There are lots of stuff that you need to have in place in order to support that release. And, and so there's an awful lot of pre-planning in advance, not least in this case, hiring Keanu Reeves to do the adverts. So how do you maximize your chances of success? Well, there are really only three options and one of them is kind of stupid and doesn't work. Here's the classic planning triangle, which shows uh, scope, schedule, and resources. These are the, the typical levers that we have to exert control when we're trying to deliver a project. There's a fourth one that sometimes people try and use, which is quality, but let's take quality off the table because working to low quality is rarely a successful outcome. And anyway, it seems that that's what CD Projekt Red have already tried once. Well, resources too is a rather problematic lever. As Fred Brooks famously said, you can't make a baby in a month with nine women. There is a hard limit to how scalable most problems are. And the limit in software teams is pretty severe. Teams of five people and fewer are nearly four times as productive as teams of 20 people and more. Typically in the games industry, teams are extremely large. Uh, there's a reference to the data behind that assertion in the description if you're interested in following it up. Oh, and small teams also produce higher quality software too. That's in the, li in the link to as well. So that leaves only really time and scope as useful levers that can really enhance our ability to deliver a project. It's pretty obvious that CD Projekt Red was trying to fix both time and scope at the same time. While te with teams crunching for over a year, um, after a year, actually, after only a week or two, people will be burned out and working less effectively. Uh, anybody that's tried working that hard for that long knows what I'm talking about. I think that the Cyberpunk 2077 adventure shows all of the signs of a team that fix both time and scope. You can't rationally fix both. That assumes that you can make a perfect plan. If you're going to fix both time and scope, your plan must be perfect. So what would a perfect plan look like? Well, we'd need to understand the goal that we were trying to achieve and We'd need to know all of the steps to achieve that goal. We'd need to know how long each step's going to take. And we'd need to also know all of the interruptions that are likely to occur along the way. This is simply impossible. Uh, what really happens is that as soon as you begin, reality starts changing things and your plan is no longer accurate. Maybe the goal will move. Uh, a competitor perhaps releases a new game and makes you rethink what you want in yours. Or maybe you just have a fantastically cool idea that you'd like to add in that you didn't plan for. 
You think of new steps that you missed in your plan, new activities that you must undertake to complete. And the steps that you did think of take longer than you expected. Nearly always they take longer. This is one of those odd aspects of human behaviour, uh, which is not at all rational. We always know that whatever it is that we're going to do is going to take longer than we expected. On average, at the beginning of a project, uh, it's going to take you four times longer than you estimate to complete. Maybe if we plan really, really hard, we might be able to get that, that error down to only two times instead of four times. Um, but the commercial pro pressures on us will nearly always make us plan for, for, for one time, even if we know that it's going to take two. This is just dumb, but it's the way that mostly we do planning. Then there are all of those unexpected, unplanned for interruptions. Maybe there are bugs in last year's game and we have to go off and fix those bugs and it takes time out of our development. Um, maybe the coordination between the teams as we divided up our project takes a bit more work than we expected. Or maybe there's an un unknown technical difficulty that gets in our way. Maybe a global pandemic forces us to work in new ways that we haven't considered. We can't predict the future. So perfect plans are a perfectly stupid idea. They are in the realms of magic, and I don't believe in magic. So what can you do instead? You fix one of those axes, either time or scope, but never both. You can vary either one, but you must have one, but one of them must be variable. My bet is that the plan for Cyberpunk 2077 was one of two things. They obviously targeted development at the new platforms, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. So either they expected everything to just work on the old platforms when they coded it to the new, or their plan looked a bit more like this. They're going to work on cool game stuff on new platforms and on the PC. They're going to mig At the end of that, they're going to migrate to the PS4 and the Xbox One, then they'll do some testing, then they'll release, and then they'll count their money. Clearly, this plan failed. So what should they have done? Well, fix either time or scope. For example, Apple never pre-announces their products. They don't fix time, they fix scope. They decide when something is finished, and only then do they start getting, they start taking it to market. That gives them the option to hold products that aren't finished. Uh, one of the Apple products that has been rumoured for several years is Apple Glass, but they're still only rumours. There's no announcement from Apple and there won't be until it's ready for release. So you could hold the products that aren't yet finished, maybe say they don't work, maybe your PS4 implementation is not yet ready for prime time, uh, and then there's no, there's no fuss because there's no announcement to pull back from. Alternatively, you can work to manage the scope. So you fix time, you're going to hit a particular release date, but you don't say what's going to be in the release date. You be a little bit vague about what your release will include. Discuss publicly only in broad terms what's in there. Work so that your software is always in a releasable state from the beginning and you get even more freedom. This all gets into the guts of true software engineering and continuous delivery. It means automated testing, deployment pipelines, and continuous integration as part of the development process. Then you can make a business decision whenever it makes sense about whether you're ready to release or not. For argument's sake, assuming that you can't have it all, and please believe me, you can't have it all, then, as a business, which would you prefer, to release for PS4 or PS5 first? Doesn't matter, but choose one. Do the work to ensure whichever your priority is, is completed first. Do that work, and if the worst case happens, then development goes slower than you, than you hoped for, you can at least choose to de either delay the release or release with just support for your primary target. In this case, the PS4. You could imagine the advert, PS4 version out now, PS5 version coming soon. None of this is rocket science, but it is kind of science. Science and engineering is about facing up to reality. 
You can't fix time and scope and hope to succeed by making people crunch down and just working harder. That's magical thinking. It's not going to work. This is always the route to poorer quality, less creativity and worse outcomes. Organising our approach to face reality is the engineering approach to solving problems in software. I call it continuous delivery. And it's deeply applicable to writing games. If you want to see more, see the great talk on the application of continuous delivery to the production of AAA games in the links below. Thank you very much for watching.